Mario Kart is a franchise that's always been known for its chaotic races and unrivaled ability to ruin friendships with its multiplayer. Its single player offerings though are a little lacking, I mean you have Grand Prix, time trials, versus races, but there's not much else aside from that. But what, I hear you ask if there was another single player option to give you a break from all the racing? Well allow me to introduce you to Mission Mode, a DS exclusive side mode that has you completing certain objectives or missions within a given time limit. Sounds simple enough right? Well, let's dive a little deeper. When you first boot up the game, there are six levels available to you, each of which having nine different missions. Missions can be broken down into six main categories. The first type sees you driving through a series of gates, which are numbered based on the order that you have to pass through them. The second category involves you collecting a specified number of coins, and the third is a similar deal, but with item boxes instead. The fourth type is a little bit different from these ones, and requires you to defeat certain enemies using items like invincibility stars, green shells and bob -ombs. The fifth category is a bit more tame, and generally you just have to win a race against a character on their home course. As for the last set, well, these are what I like to unofficially call the challenge missions. Here, the game will test you on the skills you've picked up, by getting you to perform tasks like pulling off a certain number of mini turbos in one lap, or driving through a certain section of a course in reverse. My personal favourite instance of this was driving across the rotating beam in Bowser's castle backwards, that one was always a lot of Fun. Now, if this was all there was to mission mode, then it probably wouldn't be very interesting, and I most likely wouldn't be making this entire video about it. The thing that really makes it stand out is the way that these challenges escalate as you get into the later stages. Take driving through the gates, for example. It starts off pretty simple, with you going around figure 8 circuit with the gates laid out all nicely and in order for you, but in later missions, the game will do things like make you drive through the gates in reverse. It plays around with the layouts of certain courses like Luigi circuit from Double Dash, subverting your expectations by making you weave between the lanes to get into the right gates, and even making use of some of the battle tracks like Pipe Plaza. This one's layout is a bit confusing, and the positioning of the gates reflects that, so it takes a second to figure out the optimal path. But what about the coin missions? Aren't they just the same as driving through the gates but with a smaller target? Well, not exactly. You see, if you get hit while holding your coins, they get scattered all over the place and you have to collect them all over again. Of course, mission mode takes this idea and runs with it. You'll have coins placed right next to a chain chomp, directly underneath thwomps, and on one instance, you have to collect 40 coins on the face of TikTok clock while avoiding the hands. I didn't realise that they could do so much with a seemingly simple task like collecting coins, but I was impressed by the sheer variety of the tasks that the game throws at you. Like initially, I thought that the item box missions were gonna overlap with the coin ones too much, since at the end of the day, you're just collecting X amount of a certain thing, right? And yet, despite this, the game still finds a way to keep you on your toes. You see, there are two key differences that separate item boxes and coins. The first of which is obvious, the fact that, well, item boxes give you items. Generally, this function is used to give you mushrooms, which in turn help you to get to the next boxes faster. The second difference is something that isn't apparent from the first item box mission, but it's what sets them apart from the coin missions to such a great degree. Item boxes can move. This might not seem like much at first, I mean chasing a few boxes through Luigi's mansion isn't much more of a challenge than hitting the stationary ones, but how about when they're moving all over the place and bouncing off the bumps in while Luigi pinball? Or what about when they're weaving in and out of the deep water sections of SNES Cooper Beach? Heck, sometimes they even hide them amongst the fake item boxes, and you can only tell which ones are real once you get up close. They did this on Choco Mountain as well of all maps, where your visibility is at its worst because of how foggy it is. Then you have the race missions. I mentioned earlier that you have to beat a certain character on their home turf, but that's not always entirely true. On Shroom Ridge, for example, you're racing against… uh… a red car? Not a character driving a car, just a straight up car. I don't know why I find this so funny, but it feels so uncanny to do in a Mario Kart game. <laughs> Another really cool one puts you up against one of the chain chomps from Peach Gardens, and this one actually has its own unique music. 
People have speculated that this was the leftover soundtrack from when the change on Python was planned to be in the game until they replaced it with the bullet bill, so there's your useless bit of Mario Kart trivia for the day. <laughs> Sometimes you have to race through modified versions of the courses, like a Mario circuit with extra Goombas and Piranha Plants, or other times you have to do the tracks backwards. For example, there's one of these cases with Mushroom Bridge, and you have to drive into the oncoming traffic, and there's also one where you're racing against Peach on Peach Gardens, except you have to do one lap backwards. Huh, that sounds strangely familiar to anyone else, or is that just me? Now, that covers all of the standard missions, but for the final mission of each level, you gotta take on a boss. To me, the concept of having boss battles in a Mario Kart game altogether is super neat, and what's neater is the fact that these are all bosses from Super Mario 64. Granted, it does make sense considering that they had the models ready to go from Mario 64 DS, but it was a clever way to reuse the assets from that game. The majority of these fights take place in an arena, where you have to attack the bosses through a certain means. In the case in the case of the big bully and Chief Chili, you need to charge at them with mushrooms, while also trying not to get faked out by the jumps. Screw you, man. <laughs> with Irock, you have to, you guessed it, hit the eyes using shells, and to beat King bob you gotta throw his own people at him. <laughs> King Boo is a bit trickier though, being the only one of these that you don't directly attack, since, well, you kinda can't. Instead, you need to collect 50 coins whilst trying to avoid him. At set intervals, he'll try and rob you blind and undo all of your progress, but much like in the actual 3D Mario games, looking him directly in the face causes him to turn transparent, which lets you take your coins back. The only boss of these first six that doesn't take place in an arena per se is Goomboss, who you race against on Baby Park while avoiding the Goombas he throws at you and grabbing the mushrooms if you can react quickly enough to tell the difference between them. <laughs> For a lot of people, beating these six bosses was where the mission mode ended, but here's the thing. Each time you clear a mission, you're given a ranking depending on how well you did. This goes from C to A, or if you do particularly well, you might be awarded with a star ranking, which goes from 1 to 3 stars. If you manage to clear every mission with 1 star or more though, you end up unlocking a secret 7th level, featuring some of the hardest challenges in the game. You'll have to do mini turbos on Rainbow Road, drive through 8 gates in just 11 seconds, and partake in other such gruelling tasks. At the end of it all lies your final challenge. One last boss, none other than Wiggler. Wiggler. Much like with Goomboss, this battle takes place in the form of a race, except this time it's on Mushroom Bridge, so the layout is a lot harder to navigate. To help you out, there are a few item boxes dotted around, but these are practically a necessity, as getting the stars means that you can take the shortcut over the hill. With each lap, Wiggler gets angrier and angrier, until on the final lap, he'll turn red and get even faster. It is very easy to get overtaken and lose it here, but so long as you stand your ground and hold your position, old Wiggler doesn't stand a chance. It's a pretty tough challenge and a worthy ending to cap off this sweet little mode. Mission mode wasn't anything groundbreaking, but it was just plain fun and a nice thing to have to break up the usual gameplay in races. It surprises me that it was only in Mario Kart DS and didn't come back for any of the future main series entries, but hey, regardless, even if it stays as a DS exclusive, I'll always look back on mission mode fondly for its unique ideas and addictive nature. I guess there's always Mario Kart 9, right? <laughs> Whenever that happens anyway. <laughs>